Good afternoon. On this January 30th, you're watching the English newscast on Future Television. I'm Yumna Naufal, and these are today's top stories. Six people killed, eight wounded, one gunman opened fire at a Quebec mosque night prayers and what Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau calls a terrorist attack on Muslims. In New York City, a second wave of demonstrations follows spontaneous rallies that broke out at U.S. airports against the enforcement of President Donald Trump's vetting. And former minister Ekrem Shayib criticizes a suggested hybrid electoral law, saying it shows superiority, while Jmail urges the ruling party not to tailor that which suits their interests. Six people were killed and eight wounded when gunmen opened fire at a Quebec mosque night prayers in what Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is calling a terrorist attack on Muslims. Police said two suspects have been arrested but gave no more details into what prompted the terrorist attack, saying the investigation was underway. Initially, the mosque president said five people were killed in the shooting and a witness said up to three gunmen had fired on about 40 people inside the Quebec City Islamic Cultural Center. Police say only two people were involved in the attack, but mass shootings, while are rare in Canada, have stricter gun laws than the United States and news of the shooting sent a shockwave through mosques and community centers throughout the mostly French-language province. On his Twitter page, Trudeau called the shooting a cowardly attack and added, quote, my thoughts are with the victims and their families. So Canada is to offer temporary residency to people stranded in the country as a result of U.S. President Donald Trump's executive order on immigration, according to Canadian Immigration Minister Ahmed Hussain. He was quoted as saying, we will continue to ensure that our immigration system is about compassion, efficiency and economic opportunity, as well as the protection of the health, safety and security of Canadians. We also welcome those fleeing persecution, terror and war. He said this at a news conference in Ottawa. While Canada is considering its policy options, the government does not plan to withdraw from the safe third party agreement with the United States at this time. The agreement requires refugees to make a claim in whichever country they arrive in first, meaning they cannot land in the United States and then try to claim asylum in Canada or vice versa. Still making headlines all over the world in New York City, a second wave of demonstrations followed spontaneous rallies that broke out at U.S. airports on Saturday as U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents began enforcing President Donald Trump's directive. The order, which bars admission of Syrian refugees and suspends travel to the United States from Syria, Iraq, Iran and four other countries on national security grounds, has led to the detention or deportation of hundreds of people arriving at U.S. airports. Sunday's protests took place at Battery Park in Lower Manhattan, within sight of the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor, long considered a symbol of welcome to U.S. shores. The march, estimated to have grown to about 10,000 people, later began heading to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Office in Lower Manhattan. The executive order signed by Trump on Friday suspended the arrival of all refugees for a minimum of 120 days, Syrian refugees indefinitely, and is barring citizens from the seven countries named as the Muslim-majority countries for 90 days. So world reactions are pouring in after the Donald Trump ban. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation warned that the travel ban imposed by the president would strengthen the position of extremists worldwide. Such selective and discriminatory acts will only serve to embolden the radical narratives of extremists and will provide further fuel to the advocates of violence and terrorism. The OIC said this in a statement released earlier today. The 56-member organization urges the U.S. to reconsider its blanket decision and to maintain its moral obligation to provide leadership and hope at a time of great uncertainty and unrest in the world. 
As a result of this ban, many of those fleeing war and persecution have been adversely and unjustly affected, according to the Jeddah-based organization. In Lebanon, former minister Akram Shaib of the Democratic Gathering Bloc is criticizing a suggested hybrid electoral law, saying it shows superiority and a wish to exclude others. While Kata'ib party chief Sami Jmail is urging the ruling party not to tailor an electoral law that would suit their interests. The suggested electoral law has elements of superiority and an intent to exclude other parties, said Shayib, speaking on behalf of a delegation of the Progressive Socialist Party after holding talks with Jmail in the Saifi residence. He announced that an agreement was reached with the Kata'ib chief on partnership and the reactivation of meetings. He also said it is said that the worst kind of injustice is to claim that there is justice. For his part, Shmail assured that the meeting was an opportunity to discuss and understand the concerns that each party has, adding that a law is needed that ensures proper representation, partnership, democracy, and diversity. Also, each party must be represented without any exclusion. Coming up next, the Caledonian Society of Lebanon celebrates the legendary Scottish poet Robert Burns. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching the 1620 o'clock news on Future Television. Hidden Figures is the surprise best film ensemble winner at the Sunday Screen Actor Guild Awards, known as the SAG Awards, a show overshadowed this year by politics as stars continue to slam U.S. President Donald Trump for restricting entry for travelers from seven Muslim-majority nations. Politics did take the center stage at the awards as many stars delivered fiery speeches to directly or indirectly criticize his ban. Maharshal Ali, who won Best Supporting Actor for his role in Moonlight, noted that he is the Muslim son of a mother who is a Christian minister. Here are some of the highlights. Good evening, fellow SAG-AFTRA members and everyone at home and everyone in airports that belong in my America. Hidden figures. This story is about what happens when we put our differences yes. aside. Emma Stone! Just, we're in a really tricky time in the world, in our country, and things are very inexcusable and scary and need action, and I'm so grateful to be part of a group of people that cares and that wants to reflect things back to societies. Denzel Washington. You know, I'm a God-fearing man. I'm supposed to have faith, but I didn't have faith. <laughs> this, God bless you all, and, uh, 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 all the other actors. Uh, I said, well, you know that young boy's gonna win, Denzel. You ain't gonna win, so I didn't even prepare. Viola Davis. And what August did so beautifully is he honored the average man who happened to be a man of color. Mahershala Ali. My mother is an ordained minister. I'm a Muslim. She didn't do backflips when I called her to tell her I converted 17 years ago. But I tell you now, we put things to the side. I mean, it's, it's, what a week this has been, though. And so you are kind of anticlimactic. Did you hear? The, the boomsday clock has been moved up to two and a half minutes before midnight. I, I, uh, and this award, it came just in the nick of time. <laughs> The Caledonian Society of Lebanon held its annual Burns Night in Cayley, an event which celebrates the legendary Scottish poet Robert Burns. Guests who attended the night at the Phoenicia Hotel enjoyed some haggis, Scottish whiskey, poetry, and Cayley dancing. Linda Tamim reports. Every year on or around January 25th, 
Scottish people in the UK and across the world celebrate Burns Night, an annual tribute to Scotland's most famous poet, Robert Burns. The poet, also known as Robbie Burns, is famous for his creative literary works and wrote more than 550 poems and songs before his death in 1796. His most popular work is arguably All Lang Syne, which is sung at New Year's Eve celebrations in Scotland and across the world. This year, the Caledonian Society of Lebanon has marked the event with a burnt supper hosted at the Phoenicia Hotel in Beirut. All proceeds were donated to local NGO Recycle Beirut. Why is it so important, do you think, uh, for you as Scots to celebrate uh, Burns Night here in Lebanon? Well, if you know any Scottish people, you know just how proud they are of their tradition and their cultures. And coming together on an occasion to celebrate Burns just brings all of those things together in a joyous, great big party. So, what better way? When you leave Scotland, there is something that always draws you back to its culture and its traditions and I think Scottish people abroad they have always they have always come together and and they've tried to share their culture and their heritage with the people that they, they live with and this is what we're doing here. Do you guys celebrate Burns Night back in Australia? Yeah we do, we've obviously got a very big Scottish community in fact um, the Burns House is just down the road from uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Canberra uh, and there's a big statue uh, um, out there so, so it does sort of make you feel like you're at home. It's nice to be a few thousand miles away from home and meet kind of uh, fellow whiskey enthusiasts and uh, get together and do a bit of Scottish dancing and whatnot, you know. This event in particular is very interesting for me because I really love Scotland. I've been there and I fell in love with the country and it's really amazing to have like a society for a Caledonian society here in Lebanon. So of course I would like to encourage such an event and even to market it over Leptivity and to let people know about it because the, the culture and uh, like the bagpipes and everything is like very amazing for me. Guests who attended enjoyed some hearty cuisine along with premium scotch whiskey, Scottish music and poetry. The evening particularly centered on the entrance of the haggis, a type of sausage prepared in a sheep's stomach on a large platter to the sound of a piper playing bagpipes. When the haggis is on the table, the host typically reads the address to a haggis, an ode that Robert Burns wrote to the Scottish dish. Ye powers, my mad man kind your care, and dish him out their bill of fare. All Scotland wants no skinking wear that jobs in luggies. Stick labour dicht. The supper was followed by a raffle and guests took to the floor for some traditional Scottish dancing known as a Cayley. And this is a, a really great dance because it really brings everybody together. You dance with not just your partner, you dance with other people. It's really fun. I have not heard a negative thing about the Burns Nights that we have had here in the Phoenicia for the past three years. I think uh, culturally we are a people that we, we basically we enjoy uh, uh, having a good time, we enjoy friendship and family. Uh, Scotland I think is not much different from some places in Lebanon, there is this sort of you know spirit of the village and mentality, and, mentality and, and we like to share. Definitely we will be sponsoring it again and we are very very happy to be here tonight. It was very nice last year when it was even smaller and now I can, uh, I can see that it's like double of what happened last year so I think it's gonna be even more great. Burns Night is gaining popularity in Lebanon by the year. Following the success of the event's third edition this year, the Caledonian Society of Lebanon is already planning for the event next year which they promised will be bigger and even better. Thank you to Linda Tamim for that report. A much needed cheer in these difficult times. And on that note, we end our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Six people killed and eight wounded when gunmen opened fire at a Quebec mosque night prayers in what Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau calls a terrorist attack on Muslims. 
In New York City, second wave of demonstrations followed spontaneous rallies that broke out at U.S. airports after Donald Trump began enforcing his directive. And former Minister Ekrem Shayib criticizes a suggested hybrid electoral law, saying it shows superiority, while Jmeil urges the ruling party not to tailor an electoral law that suits its interests. Those are your Monday headlines live on Future Television. I'm Yumna Nelfa signing off. Have a great week. <laughs> Thank you.